Hi, I'm Bobby Lee from Square, and today I'll be showing how to create an ad hoc line item for an order and then pay for it using Square's Payments API. So first, what's a line item? A line item is how we define each thing that is going to be part of an order. Whenever you get a receipt, you'll see each different item that was purchased on its own line. Orders must include at least one line item, that's a rule. Most merchant line items are backed by a catalog, which you can interact with via our catalog API. These catalog backed items are just the standard ones you'll be selling. So in line items can reference an existing item in a merchant's catalog, or you can create an ad hoc line item. So what's an ad hoc line item? Let's say I'm a donut shop and someone wants to order just half a donut. It's just a one-off ephemeral item being created in the context of an individual order. I'll be using the Ruby SDK today, but this is quite similar in other SDK languages. Okay, let's get coding. First, we'll need to install the Square gem with gem install square.rb. And then let's create a Ruby file for our code. Now we'll require the gem we just installed and instantiate our SDK client with square client.new. I have a sandbox token I've already exported as a shell environment variable. So I'll use that here and set the environment to sandbox to match. And then I'll go ahead and set max retries to three in case we need to retry a request. In order to prevent making multiple orders or payments when a request is retried, we'll use item potency keys. If you wanna learn more about item potency, check our notes below for a link. Let's head back to the code to see how that works. So I'll go ahead and require secure random here. And we're ready to create our order. And we'll use the secure random UUID here to create a unique ID for the item potency key. Now we're ready for the order body. And we'll just do a single line item here. Let's say half a donut. Then we'll charge 100 cents, so that's $1. Before we create this order with the API, we just need one more thing. A location ID. I only have one location in the sandbox account, so I'll just grab that ID with the locations API. Starting with the client. So, square.locations.list locations. And from the data, we'll fetch the first ID. And let's actually create the order with the orders API with square.orders.createOrder. Now we just need to provide the order as the body and location ID for our location. And then let's pretty print the response and run this code to see what we get. Okay, great. In the response, we can see the order was created and has an amount of money as well as an order ID. Let's go back to the code and fetch those from the response. So I'll just assign a local variable to the amount money pulled from the response, which was $1. And let's do the same with the order ID. Now that we have our order ID, we're ready to pay for the order with the Payments API. For the body, we'll use the amount money, order ID, a new item potency key, finally a source ID for the payment. Instead of a real card nonce or a mobile or web app, we'll use a sandbox nonce card token. So that's C N O N colon card dash nonce dash okay. This will simulate a valid sandbox card token. Then if this payment is successful, let's print the payment ID. And let's run the full file from top to bottom one more time from the terminal. Yay, we created an order with an ad hoc line item then paid for it with a sandbox card token. Let's head into our sandbox test account to see what this looks like on the transactions page. We can go ahead and click on transactions here and now we'll click on the most recent transaction. Here's the order listed in my dashboard and as you can see, it's been paid. And look, here's my half a donut. Next, try creating line items that correspond to catalog objects. Then you'll be able to see how these APIs work alongside Square apps to help millions of merchants run their businesses. Until next time, get building.